Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to find the distance from a point to a plane. Through this video, we're gonna derive a general formula that can be used to very quickly solve this problem. And what we're gonna see is that the solution to this problem will also help us solve other very similar problems. So we'll figure out how to find the distance from a point to a plane. And we'll also see that this helps us find the distance between two parallel planes. So to get started, um, we have the scalar equation for our plane. And let's suppose that the scalar equation of our plane is written in this kind of general format, ax plus by plus cz plus d is equal to zero. We also have a point of interest, p1, which has coordinates of x1, y1, and z1. And this is the point that we're trying to find how far away is this point from our plane. We're also going to assume we know at least one point our plane goes through, which we can always find from our scalar equation. And we're gonna go ahead and suppose in general that this known point on our plane has coordinates of x0, y0, and z0. And so we just need to add a little bit more to the picture that we have here to figure out how this process is gonna work. So we know that we have a normal vector that comes out and is orthogonal to our plane. We also know or can argue that the uh, shortest distance from our plane to our point is gonna be parallel to that normal vector n. Suppose we had a non-orthogonal uh, line coming out of our plane that was describing the shortest distance from our point to our plane. That line would look something like this. We could clearly see in a picture like that that we could move to a different point that would shrink the length of that line and therefore make the distance between our point and plane actually smaller than we originally supposed. So the shortest path from our point to our plane is gonna be along the straight line where the straight line is parallel to the normal vector for our plane. So we know this normal vector comes out at a 90 degree angle, and now it's actually just gonna be some right triangle trigonometry and dot product that finishes the work off for us. So we can also add another vector to this picture here the vector that goes from a known point in our plane, like P0, to the point of interest P1. Let's go ahead and call this vector B. Well, I've drawn this perfect little right triangle here, but in practice, or out in the wild, our normal vector might not perfectly create the height of this right triangle in our picture, so maybe our normal vector is actually too long or too large. And so the length of our normal vector n here is not necessarily the distance from our plane to our point. What we really need is the projection of our vector b onto our normal vector n. So suppose that this point right here actually is the closest point in our plane to our point of interest. Well, we don't actually even need to know the coordinates of that point for this process to work, but if we did know that point, well then we could find this vector that goes from p0 to that point, and then the the length of the vector that goes from that closest point to n is going to be the distance between our points and plane. That is not given by the length of our n vector here, but we can find the length of that vector without finding that closest point by using this vector v and some vector projections. Remember, we can think of writing this vector b that goes from a known point on our plane to our point of interest as a sum of two vectors one of the components will be the vector that is parallel and in our plane, and the other vector will be this uh, component of B that is orthogonal to our plane. Well, we can think of that uh, component as the projection of our B vector onto our normal vector, right? How much of our N vector contributes to our B vector? The amount our N vector contributes to that B vector is gonna be the distance between our point and plane. So the projection, of b onto n is technically a vector itself, but we're just trying to find the length of that vector to find the height of this right triangle in our picture. All right, so we know our vector n is the orthogonal vector to our plane, and it's gonna have components of a, b, and c. The other vector we need in our projection formula is this vector b, but looking at our picture, our vector b is gonna be the vector that starts at p naught and ends at the point of interest P1. And we can compute that vector and its components pretty quickly. It's just the difference between the coordinates between the two points. So the, the first component will look like X1 minus X0. The second one will look like Y1 minus Y0. And the final component will look like Z1 minus Z0. Well, now we can actually plug everything into this uh, projection formula up here and find the distance formula 
from this point P1 to our plane given by the scalar equation. Well, the dot product's gonna look like our B vector dotted with our N vector. And then we have to divide this by the magnitude of our N vector. But how do you find the magnitude of a vector? You take the square root of the sum of the square of the components. So that'll look like for our N vector, the square root of A squared plus B squared plus C squared. And so now we are gonna be able to simplify this quite a bit and it's gonna turn out a lot nicer than it looks at the moment. All right, so going from this line to this line, I've just expanded the dot product in the numerator. And before I go through all those steps, let me just make an important note here. Um, we're trying to find the projection of B onto N, which is this vertical distance in our picture. And this distance has to be positive. Right, we're taking the magnitude of this projection vector anyways. And well, if we think about the dot product here, the dot product actually could be negative depending on the vectors B and N that are used. So we just have to slap or throw some absolute value signs around this numerator just to make sure we don't say our distance is negative. Even if we did end up with a negative number out of this dot product, we basically get the same value for the distance. It would just be a negative number. And we just need to make it positive to have it make sense as a distance value. Okay, so I've expanded the dot product, right? I got AX1 plus BY1 plus CZ1, and then I've collected the other terms at the end, and the remaining terms are negative AX0, negative BY0, and negative CZ0. And the reason I collected those other terms off to the side over there is because what do we know about the point X0, Y0, and Z0? We know X0, Y0, and Z0 are in our plane. And so that means they satisfy the equation for our plane. So AX0 plus BY0 plus CZ0 plus some that number D is gonna be equal to zero. And so this is our formula for finding the distance between a point and a plane. Remember in this formula, A, B, and C are representing the components of the vector that is normal to our plane. And then X1, Y1, and Z1 are representing the point of interest, the point we are trying to find the distance to from our plane. That other remaining little piece D is also coming from our scalar equation. It's just the constant involved that finishes our scalar equation off. All right, everyone, in this example, we are asked to determine if the given planes are intersecting or if they are parallel. If they intersect, we're gonna find the angle between the intersecting planes as well as the symmetric equations for the plane's line of intersection. And if they are parallel planes, we're gonna try to find the distance between the planes instead. And so our first plane is given by the scalar equation, 10x plus 2y minus 2z is equal to five. And our second plane is given by the scalar equation, 5x plus y minus z is equal to one. So the first thing we have to determine is if the planes are intersecting or if they are parallel. And the way we do this is by comparing their normal vectors to each other. Remember when we have the scalar equation of a plane, it's very easy to identify the normal vector for that plane. It's just the coefficients in front of x, y, and z. So our first plane has a normal vector n1 with components of 10, 2, and negative 2. Repeating this process for our second plane, we'll find the second plane's normal vector, and that normal vector will have components of 5, 1, and negative 1. And so we can notice right away is that our second normal vector n2 is just half of our first no normal vector n1. So that means our two vectors n1 and n2 are scalar multiples of each other, so they are parallel vectors. But if we have parallel normal vectors, that means we also have parallel planes, or we have the exact same plane and infinitely many points of intersection and a distance of zero. But we can see here that the uh, equations for these planes are not exactly the same, even if we did make the coefficients match up, the constants on the other side would uh, be off, right? Since we can write n1 as two times n2 or a scalar multiple of n2, that implies that our normal vectors are parallel and therefore our planes are parallel. And so now we have to find the distance between our two parallel planes. So the problem of finding the distance between two parallel planes really is the same problem as finding the distance between a point and a plane. And we just learned how to do that. What we saw is that if we want to find the distance between a point with coordinates of x1, y1, and z1, how far is that point from the plane with a scalar equation of ax plus by plus cz plus d is equal to zero? Well, the distance between this point 
and this plane is given by this capital D, which is equal to the absolute value of a times x1 plus b times y1 plus c times z1 plus d, divided by the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. This formula we cooked up with to find the distance between a point and a plane only works when our scalar equation is written in that form of ax plus by plus cz plus d is equal to zero. So often the constant will also be on the other side. We have to move that constant over to the left-hand side with all the variable terms in order to have everything set up correctly here. That's a very common mistake to make, so watch out for that. So finding the distance between our two planes really is the same as finding the uh, distance from a point on one plane to the other plane. Right? So it doesn't matter which point we work with in a plane. If we try to find the distance from this point to this plane, or the distance from this point to that plane, or this point to that plane, those distances are going to be the same no matter what. So the next step is finding a point that is on one of our planes. And so we can very quickly find a single point on one of our planes just by using these scalar equations of our planes that were given. We can select a value for two of the variables and then solve for the remaining variable. In this case, I decided to work with the second equation here. I set x and z both equal to zero, and then that told me that y has to be equal to one. So a point that is on our second plane is the point zero, one, zero. So now our problem has turned into what is the distance between this point 0, 1, 0 and our first plane 10x plus 2y minus 2z is equal to 5. So now we know our x1, y1, and z1 values. They're 0, 1, and 0 respectively. We still need to find our a, b, and c values, which are just coming from the coefficients in front of x, y, and z for our first plane or that normal vector for our first plane. So a is going to be 10, b is going to be 2, and c is going to be equal to negative 2. What we have to be careful to not do, which is another common mistake, is to use the normal equation from the plane that we found the point in. You always have to use the other plane's equation. Right? This point came from the second plane, so our normal vector or the a, b, c values that we use are going to have to come from that first plane or the plane that's equation hasn't really been used yet. But now we can put this all together pretty quickly to find the distance between these two parallel planes. Our numerator is going to look like the absolute value of um, a times x1. Well, that'll be 10 times 0. I'll just go ahead and write everything out. Then we have to add to that b times y1. That'll be 2 times 1. Then we add to this c times z1. Well, that'll be a negative 2 times a 0. Then we add to that our constant d. Notice the equation of our plane is not written in the required form for this formula or process. So you really have to move that 5 over to the left-hand side. So our d value here is not going to be positive 5. It's going to actually be negative 5. So that's what our numerator is going to look like. And the denominator is going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared. So that'll be 10 squared plus 2 squared plus negative 2 squared. So that first and third term are going to be 0. What's left in the numerator is 2 minus 5. And remember, that's an absolute value, so that'll simplify to the absolute value of negative 3, or positive 3 in the end. And then our denominator is going to be the square root of 100 plus 4 plus 4 or the square root of 108. And if we wanted to simplify this further, we could, because the square root of 108 is the square root of 36 times the square root of 3, and that'll simplify to 3 over 6 times the square root of 3. Just to finish simplifying this fraction for a little bit of review, 3 over 6 is 1 over 2, so that becomes 1 over 2 times the square root of 3, and then if we rationalize the denominator, by multiplying both above and below by the square root of 3, what we'll end up with is the square root of 3 over 2 times 3, and 2 times 3 gives us 6. So we have determined that these two planes are not intersecting, they are parallel planes, and by using that uh, process for finding the distance between a point and a plane, we were able to find the distance between these two planes. The distance between these two planes is exactly the square root of 3 over 6 units.